Hello, and today Electra Pages is here at PCIM, and we have a very special guest. We've got Lou from Navitas, and thank you ever so much for having us today. Cheers, thank you, welcome. Now, just before we jump over to all the demos and all the cool things they're displaying, I think this talk would be great to go through who exactly you guys are, what you do, and why engineers should know about your company. Sure. So, before we start, could you explain to the audience who you are and what you do? Sure, okay. Well, my name's Lou. Uh, I'm responsible for product management and marketing at Navitas. Uh, Navitas it was founded in 2014. It was a GAN company, but they've done GAN slightly different to the rest of the market. What they've done was they integrated the driver with the actual GAN hemped power device monolithically on the same chip. So what that enabled was uh, no gate, gate loop inductance when you're switching, so it enabled the, the device to switch fast as possible. Ooh. So you could really switch up to the you know, megahertz range and up to two megahertz we, we, we state. So that allowed uh, a lot of the passives to be shrunk, a lot of the efficiency to go up, and that's why we became number one in like travel adapters initially. So for travel adapters, we've sold over 175 million pieces. Uh, we're in over 450 uh, charges in production, mm. and we're in the top 10 of all the 10 uh, OEM manufacturers for charges. So only 175 million? Just, only. Yeah. Yeah. Just the small numbers. Um, so that's really interesting you said about combining the gate driver with the uh, GAN device, because if I, as, as I understand it, obviously the, the, the GAN technology itself requires, uh, well it's gallium nitride, it's, it's not going to be silicon. So how are you combining the two then? Are you how do you combine them? Uh, well, we use uh, you know the, the drivers. What you can use on a on a GAN production scale. So, you know, we use uh, analog, uh, you know, PN junctions. You could say, and we use that with the actual power hemped uh, GAN switching device, and we do that all on the same process. So, 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 so this is the part I'm trying to figure out. So you've got the GAN transistor itself. That's your yes. N type transistor. And that's going to be your switching uh, uh, element in your power supply. Right. And then you've got a driver for that. Yes. And I take it that driver, does that take in logic signals? And then, or is it, or is it analog signals? It's, it's, it's analog, yeah. It's an analog driver. So, and that itself will also be an amplifier, I suspect, of some kind? It has, it has a lot of control circuitry in there, right. all analog, but the point is it's made on GAN. And so even the gate driver, uh, the, the, whole, the whole control driver, the gate yes. driver, that's also GAN. Yes, that's where now, it started. Ah, oh, that's really interesting because yeah. my because I was I was thinking like I would imagine gate drivers would normally be like made in silicon because they need to be like because they'll have like active components, logic components, all that kind of stuff, and they yeah. can be quite difficult to you can't put that on the same wafer as the GAN device. But you've been but instead you've said no, let's make it out of GAN, all of it, yeah. combine it. And that way you have a monolithic device, uh, which which obviously reduces the complexity of manufacturing, Correct. reduces the price of manufacturing, I suspect. Yeah. Uh, makes it very, very small and compact, and I also suspect very efficient. Yeah, extremely efficient. Like you say, if you have a silicon gate driver uh, and a gallium nitride hemp device, you would have to connect it somehow, yeah. and that track uh, you know, generates gate loop impedance when you're switching at those very high frequencies. That's what we eliminated. Which also means that the distance between your gate driver and, your, and the, 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 the transistor itself is so small, there's virtually, well, there's going to be virtually no um, Impedances, as, well, not impedances, inductance in terms of the distance because the distances are so short. Yeah, um, and that also means you can operate at higher frequency as well. That's the point. Yeah, so that's why we we are number one in the in the market in the GAN market. It really took off for travel adapters because travel adapters need to be lightweight yep. and small. So we tick both boxes there, mm. and uh, really took off. Now that's travel adapters. That's where we started. After that, now we're looking at higher power data centers, uh, EV. Um, anything what needs charging at mm. high frequencies, uh, the GAN solution is, is very good. Mm. Now, this entire uh, event has all been, for me, it looks like it's dominated by GAN and, and, silicon, on yeah. and silicon carbide. So my next question is, uh, do you guys deal with silicon carbide or is that something that you guys don't deal with? No, so it's a great question. So I was about to get to that. So, you know, Navitas came from the GAN world. Yep. But uh, about a year and a half ago, we acquired a company called Genesic. Yep. Now, Genesic is a very well-known company for high voltage and also a leading um, technology uh, in their MOSFET designs. So they, we have something called, uh, it's called trench-assisted planar gate technology. And it's different to the traditional planar uh, gate, which sits horizontal. 
and you have trench gates which stick vertical. Yep. We have uh, this technology, it's a unique technology to, to Navitas where it's trench assisted. And it's a planar gate but with trench assist. There. Right, so I've got to try and get this. So you've got a planar gate going yep. across, but you've got the trench assist which is going vertical. Yes. So what exactly is the vertical part doing in this design? So that's, that's the proprietary stuff we're, we're, we shouldn't talk about, we're not allowed to talk about. <sighs> <laughs> but, okay, well apparently it helps. But what it does, the, the <laughs> benefits are, if you look at trench, so if you look at uh, the different technologies and the different ways, to make a trench you've got to put a gate oxide, which manufacturing wise is very difficult to do. And we're talking vertical gates, so you have to grow a lot of oxide. Yeah, you have to grow the oxide, but you have to grow it on the liner of a, of a trench. Right. Very so difficult to do that at the moment. Oh yeah, because you have two contacts coming up and then it comes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It has uh, yes, to become yes. formal all the way. That's, yeah. So planar is better, it's easier. Easier. The yield is higher, your cost of manufacturing is cheaper. But the trench has more surface area kind of like surrounding the area which you're controlling. That's so it's all, like gate all around almost, yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. So you've got, yeah. So, you've got so more now, so what we have with our technology is we have the, the switching performance of trench, uh, because trench switches very quickly. Yeah. Um, but we have the cost of manufacturability of planar. So uh, we have very high yields, uh, lower cost of manufacturing, but we have the uh, performance of trench. Which explains why you don't want to talk about it. Yes. <laughs> Tell them all the secrets. Right, right. And the, one of the other key things with, with, with this technology, it allows the lowest RDS on shift over temperature. So what that oh. means is if you've got a 20 milliohm device at mm. room temperature on a data sheet, when it actually goes to 150 degrees C, mm. technologies like Trench might go up two or three times. So that 20 milliohms might become 60. Yeah. We have the lowest uh, RDS on shift over temperature in the industry. That's what makes our technology the best. Uh, and what, what kind of shift is that really? It's like 1.3. So oh, it is so. basically no... So that means up to, up, up to 150 degrees, or 100 degrees. Which is 75. So, so, so up to 75, there's no, degre there's no derating. Yeah, there's a slight, yeah. Um, okay, slight, but virtually no derating. I mean, yeah, like you're, yeah. you're talking like, like I said, one point, was it 1.2 or? 1.3, yeah. 1.3, so it's like you've gone from 100 watts to like 70, but that's still significant when you've gone up to 75 degrees, because if I remember correctly, or, or correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that GAN is quite sensitive to temperature changes. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it's, yeah. And, and, and so to have, to have that kind of performance is, is pretty impressive in a GAN device. Um, so in terms of efficiencies, what, what, what are we looking at uh, in terms of, um, let's say like your travel adapters, what, what are we looking at in terms of efficiencies? So it all depends on the travel adapters. The, the travel adapters started at, you know, uh, 45 watts, 65 watts. Yeah. And then as the, the, the power, the PD 3.1 protocol expanded, what happened is the smartphones uh, try to differentiate by charging faster. So you can now charge your phone in less than 10 minutes from zero to 100%. In order to do that, you need like a, a charger which can do 240 watts or 300 watts. So you've seen these charges which, are, which were like initially 20 watts and now they're at like 300 watts. So we're seeing this huge uh, increase in power demand. Mm. With that, you need different topologies and you need efficiencies, you know, above the 97% to yeah. achieve that. And only uh, GAN Otherwise, can do that. you've got too much heat being produced, it's too energy inefficient. Yes, and typically these charger cases are all enclosed and, you know, they're plastic. You, and you, 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 can't, you, can't, burn. you can't have a fan blowing air through these things, so. <laughs> yeah, and you can't burn your fingers when you touch them, no. so. So that's a lot, you know, it never occurred to you there are so many requirements for, it, for it. even something as simple as a travel adapter that needs to be able to do 60 watts, not burn someone, not have a heat sink, not have assisted cooling, uh, all, all while being 97% efficient. It, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of stress for someone to design something like that. It is, and that's why you see a lot of manu manufacturers' types of designs. If you open them up, you'll see how they've actually mm. done it in some clever ways, for some interesting ways, mm. how they you know, approach it, especially AMI, stuff like that. And, and, and it seems to me that it was only a few years ago that people started talking about GAN technology and it seems to have just rapidly explode it. How, how long have you guys been working on this? Uh, I think we, we, we started production in 2018, if I remember, mm. in you know, real mass production. And uh, since then we've just rocketed. Mm. And, and you know, the charges is one thing, but some of the demos which I'll show you soon, you know, uh, data centers, that's a huge market that's taken off. I can see that being a really big market. Yeah. You know, data centers, the amount of energy that those things consume is, is, is ungodly. And obviously, if you can save 1% on data centers, that's a huge amount of electrical electricity bills you're not paying yes. per year. So obviously, every percentage of 
efficiency is going to be really important. So I'm not surprised at all that you said data centers. And that, I kind of kind of makes me wonder if there's also going to be a link to things like AI as well with GAN technology. Yeah, so in one of our designs, we, we recently launched an AI uh, a data center roadmap, which is you know tracing how people like NVIDIA are mm. kind of uh, requiring their demands for power as they grow. So like the Blackwell chip, which was just recently launched, that needs at least a kilowatt of power. And right now we're at 150 to 250 watts each server uh, board, which we'll explain later. But um, yeah, we have to follow that trend. So it's, there's a lot of emphasis on how the power is going to meet the actual chip uh, from these guys. And I've got just another question about GAN compared to silicon carbide. Now again, I, I don't know if I'm right or not, but if I remember correctly, uh, silicon carbide tends to be more useful when you've got much higher voltages, you've got uh, lower, lower switching frequencies, things like automotive, whereas GAN tends to be better for high frequency, maybe even RF potentially for power, is that, is that correct? I mean, uh, if, if you trace the history back, uh, GAN came from the RF world. Ah, right. Uh, what they've done is manipulated it for, for power and for the higher voltages. So yeah, GAN is a very fast switching device, it's a hemp and it you know, there's no PN junction, so it switches extremely quickly. Yeah. Um, there's no PN junction? No, a hemp uses a two deck. Uh, uh, so, so, what does process. the structure look like for a typical GAN device? Then? What are we saying we've got a piece? Of, so, what would be like the source, for example, in the drains? So, so you've, typically you've got the silicon, which is your substrate, which you build on, and you right. do a, a, an ALGAN buffer layer, and then you, on the ALGAN, you would put the GAN, and in between that, you'd have this interface called a two deck which is, has a very high electron mobility. So you'd put, let's say you dig into it on, on the drain and dig on the other side for source, you put the gate in the middle. Does that make it operate a little bit like Schottky dies where you've got like the metal end junction as opposed to being a PN junction? Uh, kind of. It, it works on, a, on a, this two deck, which is a, like a piezo interface between the ALGAN and GAN. That creates the, this sheet of electrons, free electrons, that's how it works, so it's very fast. And that's why, that's why it can conduct so much current? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, that's why it's really high speed switching, yes. Why me? That actually makes sense now when I think about it. Um, so what kind of currents are we talking about? The, so the, the GAN devices you produce, what kind of currents are we talking about per device? So it all, it all depends on the, the, the milliohms. We, we state it in milliohms. The, the current's rated for package and how, how that's all done. But, um, you know, uh, when we looked at all these charges, they were like, 450 milliohms to a couple of hundred milliohms. The stuff we have now for data center are 25 milliohms. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a significant. significant drop. Yeah, so that means the die size gets bigger to handle more current. So, uh, you know, how much current you can handle depends on the die size. And uh, what we've done is pushed it to a, you know, a very large die size. And that's interesting because everybody else will be trying to make the dies as small as possible. But in your case, by making them as big as possible, you can push ahead. It's kind of like you make the resistance, you drop the resistance and you increase the die size. It's like you're getting increased current on two fronts. So, so you, and I take it you can also have more parallel devices as well. Yes, yes. If you parallel them, then yeah, you can share the current exactly. Absolutely fantastic. So I think now we should head over and see some of these demonstrations. Sure. Fantastic. Uh, it looks like we've got a whole bunch of different charges, so I'd like you to take me through what's going on here. Sure, yeah. So, as we spoke before, you know, the GAN Power IC, we call it our GAN Fast Power IC. This is in a whole selection, just a sample of a whole selection of where the GAN is involved. Now, I mentioned before, we're in over 450 charger models which are in production. They've been in production since 2018. And we're in the top 10 of all the, t the top 10 OEM manufacturers here. So you can see some of the, the logos here where we're in from Samsung, Lenovo, Dell. I've already, I have already seen one I instantly know is massive. I have a Dell charger for my laptop and it's about five times the size, about the <laughs> yes. same power. And that just goes to show you how small that, that, that is absolutely insane. So yeah. the one I've got at home is probably probably about that, that kind of size. Right, right. In fact, I think it's in your uh, storage cupboard actually at the moment. Well, so, it's relatively yeah. old. If you look at some of the new stuff, that's, that's so a 50 watt. So that's- It's got virtually no weight to it whatsoever. No, that's called a cookie. And that's Oppo's design. I just honestly, it is incredible to see how much smaller these things are being made as a result of using GAN technology. Exactly. So the high, free, uh, high switch and frequency enables the smaller magnetics, 
uh, for smaller capacitors. Oh, that's a really important thing as well, because we had this conversation with somebody else not about two years ago, where the more the the, the the higher frequency you can go, the smaller the magnetics. And the magnetics tend to be quite large in these designs because you've got big toroid coils or if it's a transformer. Exactly, yeah. So you can make that as small as possible. Yeah. So, so I suppose my question to you is how small do you think we can make those? It's, it's you know, the GAN can switch as fast as it can, it's capable of. The, what's catching up now is the magnetics. They have to go to planar magnetics. They have to go to different type of uh, characteristics. Like, like, like 2D, 2D uh, magnetics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's all the different rare earth materials now which can keep up with GAN. GAN is not, uh, hasn't run out of power. It's, it's the other... Mag other it's uh, waiting on everybody else. Exactly. So basically GAN is ahead of the game and, yeah. and now we're just waiting for everything else to work with it to then essentially to fully realize its potential. Yes, exactly. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. So that also means at the same time, you can continue making advances in the GAN technology itself, and you're always going to be two steps ahead of the game because your devices are the latest, but everything else can't fully utilize it, so you've always got that buffer room of capability. Yeah, so <clears throat> after GANFAST, which was the initial product we made, another family called GANSense, uh, which had the sense control built in, and it, it eliminated about... 1% of uh, gains of 1% of efficiency because it took out the current sense. So we put that inside. So we are ahead of the curve compared to all our competition. No one really does this type of stuff. Mm. And since then, we've done other families like GAN, uh, GANFAST control, where we have the controller IC inside this type of stuff. Absolutely so. fantastic. We're... Next, I'd like to walk over here where, we, where it looks like we've got some dies. And I'm guessing these are GAN dies. Yeah. So. So starting from the left, we've got a GAN processed wafer. So this is a six inch wafer. Mm -hmm. We use TSMC to process it. We do all the design and, uh, you know, they do the processing. Sorry, TSMC? Yes. They we support GAN technologies? They do, yeah, for several years. So they're the main player for GAN processing, GAN on silicon processing. I power. honestly had no idea. I thought you'd have to go to a specialist to do something like that. No, no, TSMT doing it a long time, several years. Why? I had honestly no idea. So, so, yeah. what's it, so what's this second wafer doing? So like? the second wafer is a silicon carbide substrate. Yep. So silicon carbide is a crystal structure, and how this grows is a uh, transparent, right? So that's pure silicon carbide? Yeah, pure silicon oh, carbide. Oh, wow. So it grows in a ball, and then it gets sliced, mm -hmm. and then buffed and CMP'd, and you get to this stage. The next stage is to grow an epi. Uh, a tactical layer, yeah. Exactly, yeah. depending on the voltage you want and then you do the processing on top. And I take it that the more, uh, the, the thicker the epitaxial layer, the, the higher voltage you'll be able to handle. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so for 1200 volt, you'd be maybe 10 to 12 microns thick for 650 volts, like maybe six microns. That's now, actually quite thick, isn't it? Uh, you know, that's, that's thick, but when we talk about the stuff we do, like Genesic uh, technology mm. goes to 6.5 uh, mm. kV. So that's like 65 that's microns, and that's really thick, yeah. yeah. So that takes time and, and a lot of energy to, to do that perfect. And this last wafer, as it says here, is silicon uh, carbide processed wafer. Yeah. So I take it this is when you've uh, added all the extra layers on top. Yeah, you grow the epi, and then you, you, know, you, you form the channels, you do the implant, you put the gate oxide, and then eventually you put the metal on top and the backside. So, and so what we're seeing here, are these are aluminium layers that are acting as the contacts for the uh, transistor itself? Yeah, exactly. So there's a top metallization scheme. Yep. You can see like there's a little square at the top, that's the gate. Next to that, the whole area is a source, and on the back side is a drain. Ah, so I can see something here, these little structures. What's going on here, then? They're just test structures. Oh, right, so these are probe points for you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, very, that's very interesting, actually. And so, and so this is like the final product before you then slice, dice, and then... Yeah, so then, then it either will get uh, diced, it gets put onto a film, gets diced, and it will be either sent as die, or it can be packaged and sent off as a discrete or a module. Now, a very important question for you. Which one are you most proud of? <laughs> these, these, both Those of two. these, yeah. No, the, 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 the GAN we do is uniquely Navitas, and it is very, very, uh, uh, I don't want to say sexy, but it's very sexy, right? It's got a lot of IP in there, mm. and it's, uh, it's, it's took a lot, of, it is unique, it's took unique. a lot of people to get to bat. And so you're not, you're not following the competition, you, you, you are the competition essentially, you are the leader in that area. We are the leaders, yeah, for the GAN Power IC, so very proud of the GAN Power IC. With the silicon carbide, we do have this uh, unique technology of a trench-assisted planar, 
Oh, as you said before. Yeah, and, and that is, is a... Another critical point. Yeah. And so, and so but, but of these two, which one do you see being the more important business in the next 10 years? Do you think it's going to be Silicon Carbide or GAN? I think they've both got a big play in the market. Um, what we've seen is with Silicon Carbide, they deal with hard switching a lot more. So you'll see them in like for traction inverters for EVs and... I was going to say like big motors, anything that's got a lot of sudden inductance or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that or PFC. Yeah. Whereas the GAN is like a, it's like a Ferrari, it's high speed. It's designed to convert power very efficiently. Diesel engine, petrol engine, essentially. <laughs> so, yeah, so, this, yeah. so the silicon, silicon carbide has the muscle, but the GAN has the speed. This is like the Hummer, and this is like yes. the Ferrari. Hummer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's now go over to the power supplies, the data center power supplies, and how you are using GAN technologies to improve those. Sure. So let's, let's head over. So. Strangely enough, I'm actually quite familiar with server power supplies because I run, I've run a number of little server racks at home and I'm always switching things around. So already this is looking quite familiar to me. But what I'm interested in is what makes these different to the ones I might have at home. Okay. So, so what we have here is, a, is three data center power supply units. And we've got a 2.7 kilowatt. We've got a 3.2 kilowatt. And this is the latest and greatest. It's a 4.5 kilowatt. And this is the, the highest power density uh, AI server power supply unit today, globally. So now, I'm just thinking about what I've got at home. And I've, my, my server power racks are probably about that size, and yeah. they're about a kilowatt each. So you've, you've shrunk it in half, you've increased the power by four times, and, and it's essentially with, with an eight, eight times multiplier you, as a result of GAN. Exactly, by using GAN, and with, with these two designs, we use a hybrid of GAN and SICK. We use SICK on the PFC with our latest oh. Gen 3 fast MOSFETs. And then for the LLC, we use our latest GAN safe uh, and, GAN. And so, and so, as you said before, the, the silicon carbide is, is handling the heavy power due to stuff on that side, but then your GAN is then handling the, uh, I suppose, the power conversion yeah. to, to, for the 12 volts, the 5 volts at high current ratings. Yeah four things like the NVIDIA AI uh, uh, chips. Right, so if you look at maybe the 2.7 kilowatts, typically a data center PSU uh, powers about eight to 10 uh, server boards. And each CPU or GPU on a server board is around about 150 watts. That's about, yeah, makes sense. So 150 yeah. times uh, 10, you know, you've got 1.5 kilowatts, like what you said you got at home. Now, with the advancements of, of the CPUs and the power demands, they're going to like uh, 250, 350, 300, the latest one's 300, and that's why you need a 3.2 kilowatt uh, power supply to handle those 10 boards. Mm -hmm. So the next one's going to 450 uh, watts, these CPUs, the boards. So we need to follow that with a 4.5 kilowatt uh, in the same form mm -hmm. factor as this. So are these, uh, so these are, these are uh, power supplies you actually manufacture as a company? Uh, so no, we use so we have a design team, uh, ah. one for EV and one for data center, one for chargers, and this is how we uh, you know, showcase. So, exactly. so you've designed an entire working power supply and you don't sell it. We work. We <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's a shame because it's an incredible power supply. It's ready and it's it's production ready. What we do is we work with some customers who I will see. You sell it. the design or, or or you might give them the reference design so that they can then sort of tweak it as they need. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For their needs. So. But the most important thing is you're demonstrating your GAN in this. And, yeah, and, and, and this it in the whole of PCM is the most highest power uh, PSU we have. Now, if you look at the blocks uh, on the back, this is 12 volts out. Now the AI. It needs uh, a higher voltage output. OCP is saying 48 volts out. So on the back of this one's a 48 volt Sorry, output. Sorry, what needs 48 volts? The, the, the NVIDIA Well, parts. yeah, because it needs a lot more power. And so you have to pop the voltage. So that you can reduce the current, so therefore you reduce the efficiencies. So your I square R losses, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah it's exactly. the same as the car battery going from 400 to 800. Mm -hmm. Same principle. So, um, so that's a 4.5, but on our roadmap, we go to 8.5 and 10 kilowatts onwards to support the Blackwell NVIDIA chip. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it's not going to get any bigger. <laughs> the, the size, you know, the demand is the size, but this would be 10 kilowatts, right? That's so. absolutely ridiculous. I know. Basically, a ha almost the entire powerhouse needs come from something about that size. Yeah, I guess you... <laughs> Which is honestly right ridiculous. Um, but if yeah. we move across here, we've got some uh, other stuff that looks quite interesting as well. So is what's going on here? 
So, so this, this is our data center, this is yeah. our EV selection. So this is where we look ah. at the onboard chargers. And we made out, we have another design center which makes chargers. This is a 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, onboard charger uh, with a three kilowatt DC to DC bi-directional. So this has GAN and also has um, our Gen 3 fast MOSFETs in there. So, 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 so 3.9 kilowatts. No, 6.6, .6, sorry. 6.6 .6 kilowatts. kilowatts. So yeah. in, a, in a car, this is a typical uh, standard, you would have 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. That's for like a 400 volt bus. So you use 650 volts GAN, 650 volts SIC. That's right. Now, when we go to the bigger one, this is a 22 kilowatt. This is going- But it didn't get any bigger. It's not much bigger, right? <laughs> now, this uses an 800 volt bus uh, or a battery. Ah, so you've doubled the voltage. Yeah, so now you have to use mm. 1200 volts to look in carbide MOSFETs. So yep. this is a SIC solution. It's very high power density. And that's where GAN, and, and, that, and that's, that's, I think what we were saying before is that GAN is great for high frequency, but it can't go as high voltage as silicon carbide. Because silicon carbide, I think, has a bigger band gap, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So with, with, uh, with the GAN device, it's a hemp, so it sits laterally. So mm. you'd have to move out the, the drain, the gate, the source, in order to accommodate the voltage breakdown. that increases breakdown. The, the resistance of the channel as well by doing that. There's that, but also uh, your, your yield would go down because you have to go bigger. Of course, you've got less parts per, per die, of course. Yeah, so you have yeah, to make yeah. them, yeah. So your defect density comes down. So there's a yeah. play of what you want to do. It's just kind of like tweaking the settings to try and figure out exactly what, like the most efficient way of getting those devices off those chips. And that exactly. makes and that makes sense. Um, so, so like you say, GAN under a certain power, under a certain voltage, if you go beyond, let's say 800, silicon carbide then steps in. Yes, exactly, yeah. And then the last one behind you. Um, oh yeah, this one here. I'm not sure if we can get to that. That's one of our customers called Bright Loop Converters. They're French in Paris and- uh, 250 kilowatts. So yeah, this is uh, extremely is high power density. These guys make uh, leading edge high power density designs. This is a 250 kilowatt uh, for buses for hydrogen uh, energy. Jesus. It's a hydrogen vehicle buses. You see it's water cooled here. It uses our, our Gen 3 fast 1200 volt Sorry, the MOSFETs. Size, the size of those water, that is a massive pipe for water cooling. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, just a cap. Honestly, that's honestly insane. 250 kilowatts. Yep. And it's not much bigger than that. I know, it's uh, Bright Loop have got a very special design and unique design. I can imagine. And they can get the heat out extremely well. And they use our devices. And when you use our devices, like I mentioned before, with our technology, mm. uh, our RDS on over temperature shift is a lot lower. So we make it a lot yeah. more efficient. So yeah. that's how we Honestly, do it. Honestly, that, that, that could be one of the most powerful devices we've actually seen today. Yep. So just before we wrap this video up, I've got one more question for you. Sure. For the engineers out there who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Navitas Solutions, what would you recommend that they do? Sure, I mean, come and visit our website at navitas navitassemi.com. Uh, you can reach out to any of us through the, the Contact Us button. And uh, we're here to help. We have a GAN and SIX solution. We're the, the only company which pure wideband gap. So come and visit us and see what we can offer you. Fantastic, thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Cheers, thank you. Thank you.